Sometimes you shake people and as soon as you shake them, you can feel like needles going through your palm. Needles is going through your palm and suddenly it's like one side of you is becoming weak. You know, many of us are not very ready for life. Today we are talking about something really, really important. Now, I came across this video while I was scrolling through Facebook. If you are watching me on Facebook, how are you doing? And um, now, like if you have been watching me over time, I always told you guys that it takes an insider in a particular thing or a particular practice or whatever it is I'm discussing about for you to really understand what goes on in that particular sector. J. Israel is going to be saying a couple of things as I found on the internet about ministry, about the occult. You're going to be hearing some things in this video that are going to really shock you. Now, the reason why I'm going to be believing the things, most of the things that he's going to say, because he's not just talking about pastors like Duncan Williams, a couple of Ghanaian pastors and all. If you have not watched my previous videos about the things he has said also recently, I think I have them, I'll link them in the pain comment. Because the reason why I think we need to start having these conversations is that there is a whole lot of bad blood, if I'm to put it that way. While we might have maybe true men of God, if I'm to use that term, there are also many fakes out there and also among the fakes also might be people that you love and hold so dearly to a high esteem but for someone that has been like this as an insider someone that has been into all of this as well i know there's a little bit there's been a, a couple of inconsistencies among his person coming out to expose them and then going back to his vomit again uh, later maybe we might get to take a look at a deep dive on his person i'm still working on those things as to why he apologized what is making him come out again what is really really his agenda because you have to understand people's patterns to be able to predictively suggest what the agenda might be in whatever they're doing he's been speaking a whole lot of things online recently and been exposing certain things some of them are his personal experiences like you'll be hearing in this video how he himself you know got into occultic practices how he got incisions on his body how he did a couple of things for power for him to be able to do some of the magic see people see happen in church and he's calling out a couple of other preachers as well whom he believes whom he believes are in the same thing as he is. So listen to him and then I'll, I'll be back with a couple of comments. Jay, are you sure you are a pastor? In every church, pastors live and others come. Indeed, you are 0 0.9 years. Oh, well, that is, that, that, that's up to you to, to, to um, that's up to you, it's up to you, you know. I'm giving you a go ahead. All those who say, no, Jezra, we're going to expose you. Je Listen, go ahead. Don't announce. Me, when I want to speak, I just say, I'm coming live. Bam! I come live and I begin to speak. All these people are coming to say, Jezra, we also have things on you. We are also going to speak, my friend. Go and speak. Stop wasting time. Go and talk. Are you with me? Go and talk. Our fathers have let us down. We have been highly let down by the fathers an archbishop from today i'm sorry i cannot continue to address you as an archbishop i can't i can't that i cannot do i will not address you as an archbishop the reason being your life is not in alignment with what the title of a bishop stands for. That is why some of us, we decided to call ourselves J. Israel. J. Israel, no title. Don't give me any title because I don't want pressure. No title. Don't put a title. Don't put a title to my name. I don't need no title. Don't put a prophet's title because you give me pressure to go and lie to people. I don't want a title. 
Don't give me a title because you give me pressure to go and perform. Most of these people who are addicted to titles, they are under pressure to perform. That is why every service is a service of performance. Every service is a service of performance. They come to perform. They don't come to preach. They come to perform. But they come to preach. They don't come to preach. They come to perform. They're performing magics. Performing magics in front of the people. Performing magics and magics and magic. You are performers. Simply because of the title. Simply because of the title. Simply because of the title. Number two issue that I addressed today. Number two issue that I addressed today in my comments, in my posts that I've been making uh, and all the posts that I've been doing and everything. One of the key issues that I addressed is this. There is a picture of your bishop because Mr. Nicholas Williams there is a picture of him he's holding a sword like this hmm? he's holding a sword and then as he's holding the sword uh, on the sword there is a sign and the sign that is on the sword is like a star that is appearing on the sword okay there is a star on the sword and then He's wearing a ring and the ring that he's wearing is an occultic ring and not only him is wearing that ring we have the likes of pastor brian amuateng pastor brian amuateng from ghana uh, who's been host hosting uh, some international youth encounter what 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 international youth gatherings in ghana who is considered to be one of the sharpest prophets in Ghana by the so-called fathers of Ghana simply because he's giving them big envelopes and they're not able to reprimand him and call him to order and tell him that all the prophecies that he's giving are fake prophecies they are state-managed prophecies he does not hear from God he does not speak the mind of God but he's a liar from the pit of hell all these Ghanaian prophets who are being invited i'm going to call them out tonight one by one all the ghanaian prophets who are operating under the occultic powers under the occultic forces under the occultic spirits i'm calling all of you one by one tonight i'm calling all of them one by one one by one all of them i have started with their father who is a hypocrite the mr duncan williams you are wearing a ring a ring if you're watching me now and your pastor comes to church wearing a big ring you see this is what they do on the left hand this is what they do on the left hand they wear the marriage ring hmm? they wear the marriage ring on the left hand and then on the right hand they have the big ring okay they have the big ring I saw one of the videos where uh, mr. Duncan Williams when Mr. Duncan Williams was saying that uh, he's wearing, uh, there are people who are wearing rings and these rings, they are coming from different places, they are carrying different powers. He's saying that, but he's also wearing the same ring. And he goes on to say, no, but me, my own ring, I'm, I'm wearing my ring because it is the ring of a bishop. Okay. Sometimes you shake people and as soon as you shake them, you can feel like needles going through your palm. Needles is going through your hand and suddenly it's like one side of you is becoming weak. And immediately I have to shake it off and say in the name of Jesus, fiery darts, come out, 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 name of Jesus, come out, return to sender. And sometimes immediately you say return to sender, the very person begins to do this. Very strange things. And sometimes it's coming from a ring they are wearing. Some people wear all kinds of rings that represents all kinds of things and carries all power. This ring doesn't have anything in it, so please. It's just my ring as an archbishop. It doesn't have anything in it. Amen. But you have to be very sensitive. Mr. Williams, we are putting you aside. Let's say you are wearing your ring because we are, because you are a bishop. Let's say you are wearing that ring because you are a bishop. Now, Brian Amwateng is also wearing that same ring. Is he a bishop? 
I'm asking a question. Brian Amwateng is also wearing that same ring. Is he a bishop? Akwasi Ajemang Prempe from Ghana is also wearing the same ring. Is he a bishop? Huh? Prophet Salifu Amwako from Ghana is also wearing the same ring. Is he a bishop? I'm asking, is he a bishop? Is he a bishop? <laughs> oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll pull those nerves. I'll pull them. You'll feel the pain. All the scales on your eyes are going to fall off. And you're going to know the truth. Let's say, because I saw a bishop. Eh? Let's say uh, uh, this uh, 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 Nicholas Duncan Williams. He is wearing a ring. And he says, his ring, he's wearing it because he's a bishop. Now your pastor, even in South Africa here, we have them. They went to Ghana, they came back with rings. We know you. We know you, false prophets. Haters of truth. You are propagating Satanism in South Africa. You are propagating Satanism in Zimbabwe. You are propagating Illuminati. You are initiating people into Satanism. In South Africa, in Zimbabwe, in Malawi, in Zambia, in Kenya, in Lesotho, in Uganda, in Nigeria, you are propagating Illuminati and Satanism with your satanic rings that you are wearing. Now listen, and listen to me very carefully. We have them in South Africa. We have them in Zimbabwe. They are also wearing rings. Somebody made a comment and he said those rings, they are worn by bishops. They are, 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 are seals of power. It is a, it is a signet ring uh, according to the scriptures. The, did Jesus say uh, uh, if you wear a signet ring, it is going to be a sign that I am with you? No. Jesus said, tarry here, do not leave until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. For the Holy Spirit shall give you power. It is not the ring that gives power to hell with your satanic rings. It is not the ring that gives power. It is the Holy Spirit that gives power. It is not the ring that gives power. It is the Holy Spirit that gives power. You are wearing your marriage ring on your left hand. And on your right hand, you are wearing a satanic ring. What for? And you come and say, no, eh, eh, because... Eh, eh, eh. And we know most of them who are wearing these rings are from Ghana. And most of them who are wearing these rings, they collected them from Ghana. They went to Ghana, collected the rings, and they came back wearing these rings. Some of them, they went to Ghana, they did not even get nothing. They did not even get power. They just came back with the ring to come and lie to people that now they've got power. Now they've got power because they're coming from Ghana. Nonsense. The Bible says on that day, there shall be what is called the gnashing of teeth. <laughs> the gnashing of teeth. You and your ring, you shall give an account. God is going to ask you. I gave you the Holy Spirit to use as a functioning tool. And you decided to go to Ghana to come back with rings of power. Satanic rings. Why? Let me stand up. Let me stand up and address this issue whilst I'm standing. So that some people can really get to understand that this is not a joke. <laughs> now this is the point i say listener discretion advised the things you're about to hear now might be very uncomfortable to your ears and i don't know if you would be able to even forget it but this is his own truth but even as he's going to be talking about the achia mountain i'm going to be giving a just opposing view on that with respect to what he's about to say so i want you to listen to him and then i'm going to play a video for you that to some extent counters what he's saying about a place he went to ghana and a couple of things so as you watch please look at the screen because some things i write them in text and i don't have to talk like i'm doing right now so let's go on are you following what i'm saying are you hearing what i'm saying we know you we know you by now you go to Ghana to get powers. And I'm going to prove it to you right now. I'm going to prove it to you right now. 
that many of them, they go to Ghana, they get power, and then they come back to their countries. Hmm? All of a sudden, just yesterday, you were pastor so and so. After you went to Ghana and came back, you come back as a prophet. How come? Huh? It's a question. How come? You went to Ghana as a bishop. You come back from Ghana as a prophet. Why? Hmm? You went to Ghana as an evangelist. You come back to your country. You are now a prophet. How? These are questions. These are questions that we are supposed to ask. These are questions that we are supposed to ask. Common sense is not common after all. People, are you not tired of sitting on your brains? Are you not tired of thinking? Are you not tired of sitting on those brains? You are supposed to use your brains to think. These are satanic rings. Anybody, hear it from me. Anybody you are going to see on social media, in church, anywhere, if you see anyone wearing a ring, these rings mostly, they are big, they are very big, and they wear them on their right hands. Very big rings, some of them they wear on, on their left hands if they are not married. Very big rings, they've got some green, some of them are red, some of them are yellow. We know them. Those are not rings of bling. Those are not rings. Those are not jewelry rings that you put on because of fashion. Those are not fashion rings, but those are rings of power. Those are occultic rings. Those are rings that they give you. Those are rings that they give you. Those that are the rings that they give you so that you can go and function. Now, the purpose of the ring is to, number one, draw crowd. Huh? Because when they see that they are not able to draw crowd with their preaching and everything, they go to Ghana to look for power. And when they go to Ghana to look for power, they come back. And after they come back, they have the rings. And now when they have the rings, they come and lie. Oh, I, I, I was in the prayer mountain, and then I was in the prayer mountain for the past seven days or the past 14 days, and then when I was in the prayer mountain, and then what, 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 and then I came back, and now, God, and now you see miracles will begin to happen. All of a sudden, hey, chief, hey, 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 chief, chief, listen here, listen here, listen here. You are a pastor, you're not a prophet. That ring that they gave you, that occultic ring that they gave you, that occultic ring that they gave you, it's an occultic ring. It's an occultic ring. It's an occultic ring. Somebody says, where do you get this information from? Let me answer you. <laughs> Somebody says, where do you get all this information from? I'm always ready to answer. Now, when I was 19 years old, okay? When I was 19 years old, when I was 19 years old in Zimbabwe, I met a certain Ghanaian pastor. And the Ghanaian pastor invited me and he said, let's go to Ghana. I went to Ghana. I took a flight. We transited in Kenya. And when we transited in Kenya, no, when we were going, we transited in, uh, uh, um, we transited in Ethiopia because I used Ethiopian Airways. We transited in Ethiopia, coming back, we transited in Kenya because I used Kenyan Airways to come back. I went to Ghana. When I went to Ghana, I went to all the places. There is a mountain in Ghana, they call it the Achia Mountain. Many false prophets and many fake pastors, they go to the mountain that is called the Achia Mountain. In the Achia Mountain, there is a well of water that never runs dry in the mountain called the Achia Mountain in Ghana. Most of these false prophets and these fake pastors, they go to that mountain to collect power. When you go to that mountain, they give you water to wash your face. And they will tell you that after now, you are going to be able to prophesy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to be able to prophesy. And then when they wash your face, after they wash your face in the Achia mountain, I'm, talking, I'm telling you about things that I know. I'm telling you about places that I've visited. I have seen the Atia mountain with my own eyes. I have washed my own face with that water from the Atia mountain. Now hold on, Jay Israel. Hold on for a moment because this is where I think I don't really understand the things you were saying. Now I lived in Ghana myself for 
about a little bit most of my life because I had my first degree there. And I heard a lot of things about the same Achia Mountain. Now, it's advisable that you viewers as well always, you know, do your research when you hear things like this. And if you have been following me over time, I'm the kind of person that base my content on facts i don't just move by sentiment emotions or maybe because i'm reposting this now you would think that oh i'm siding with jay israel or whatever i'm a reporter so i report what i see i post about what i see and i give commentaries about it now the video you see right now i'm playing on your screen is a place he is talking about except there is any other chia mountain but i know this place is somewhere very popular in ghana more of like a tourist attraction when it comes to the whole christendom or would i say what people do for the faith so many people believe there to be a place of prayer even white people go there i've seen like you could see right now in the video you will see um, i'll link the full video of this in the comments because it's not my video i just got to find it as i was you know watching a couple of videos online about this place now i've also heard stories of pastors who go to that cheer mountain and you know go there to go and do fasting and prayer and some even died there yeah there are videos about that here but you're going to be listening to some testimonies of what I say, people that have gone there as pastors and what they had to say, and a couple of people that have been there. Now, with the water he's talking about, now, I don't know, because it, except maybe there's other things that go on there. When it comes to this particular chair mountain he's talking about, of course, um, yeah, just, just watch this video right now as I play for you a couple of things, and then I'm going to let J. Israel continue with what he has to say. But if you're Ghanaian watching me, you can tell me more about this um a cheer mountain because I, I i don't really know much but i can talk based on my findings and based on the things i've heard so you know when it comes to controversial things like this um you have to be very careful when you make comments about it because um you never just know much okay so watch a couple of these videos The mini stones hold rainwater, which visitors believe have healing properties. They fetch it to bathe, while some prefer to drink it. Most individuals who spoke of camera believe the place is a holy ground. Therefore, fetching water from there will do wonders in their life. Access to water at the camp was almost non-existent in the past. All attempts to get a borehole in the Abesuya town were not successful. But with revelation from God to the overseer, the camp has water in excess, which is likely to flow for years. Um, I have a lot of people outside. They, they were having many complications in their marriage, ministry, work and all that. When I came through the message of God, you know, every prayer, every prayer request I brought was answered. By the grace of God, now I can, in terms of word, God's word, and then to power demonstration and then accuracy in God's word, everything has worked for me. In fact, I, myself, I am a testimony. Normally, I come to this place to wait on God and to pray. And I started coming here around 2013, and I saw that this place is a, was a very nice place. We can wait on God and have a lot of encounters and a lot of men of God do come here to bless us. Yes, and so when you come here, you really encounter God and you get a lot of testimonies. That's why I normally come here to wait on God. Everything I have had, including my ministry, the auditorium, the nature of the, 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 the style of the auditorium, and all the people that God has given to me, um, Everything that I have today is as a result of the encounter at the mountains. There is a mystery box in the church known as the Covenant Box. In this box, visitors place their prayer request and seed offerings. It is believed that every prayer request placed in it is answered. Um, there is a mystery here. They have a Covenant Box in there. Yes, so after everything, I make sure that I, so I drop a seed in the box and then it's worked for almost everyone. God deals with timings, so yes, and, and here is more of a preparatory grounds. And you come and wait on God and you go and then you explode. I saw what I saw when I was 19 years old. I saw what I saw. I saw what I saw with my own eyes. 
So when I come here and I'm so rigid and I'm so I'm filled with holy anger when I'm speaking these things, is because I know what you don't know. But your problem, you want to defend what you don't know using truth. You can never defend a lie using truth. Don't defend these liars using the Bible. Expose them the way that they're supposed to be exposed. Let it be known that Nicholas Duncan Williams does not serve God. He is serving the Freemason. He is part of the Freemasonary lodges. Let it be known. Let it be known that he is part of the Freemasonary lodges. Let it be known that Duncan Williams is somebody who is quickly propagating, he is initiating a lot of young pastors into occultic, into satanism, into a, 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 a illuminati. He is he, he's initiating people. It is called the Achia Mountain. Those from Ghana, they know the mountain I'm talking about. Those from Ghana, they know the mountain I'm talking about. These false prophets, they go to a, 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 a Achia Mountain wash their faces uh, with water. Now, this water is believed to be water that is coming from the graves. It is water that is coming from the graves. It is water that they use. At times, they take this water and they use it to wash dead bodies. After they use the water to wash dead bodies, it, that, that same water, they use it to even wash people's faces so that people can prophesy. Hmm? Somebody said, what is the three black dots on your left hand? Which one? These ones. <laughs> These ones are called incisions. These ones are called incisions. Unfortunately, I cannot take them out. But they can never go away also. These three dots that you see here. It's not only these three dots that you see on me. Now listen to me. These three dots that you see, they are not the only ones that I have. I've got more. On my body i've got more here i've got more at my back i've got more all over my body i've got all these incisions everywhere these are things that were done to me when i went to ghana looking for power at the age of 19 so that i can prophesy so that i can heal the sick so that i can perform miracles so that i can perform signs and wonders somebody says he anointed doug howard mills doug howard mills is illuminati who doesn't know that who doesn't know that Doug Howard Mills is an Illuminati? He's a member of the Illuminati, Doug Howard Mills. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me tell you about a journey that I took when I was 19. When I went to Ghana, the person who took me to Ghana, we went to the Achia Mountain. I washed my face. Because I had so much money and I needed more power and I wanted to make sure that I get everything. The person said, okay, now that we have washed your face in the Achia Mountain with water that they use to bath dead bodies on the Achia Mountain, let's go to uh, Benin. From Ghana, we took a taxi. We hired a car from Ghana. We hired a car from Ghana and we took a car. We went across Togo. From Ghana, you enter Togo. Then from Togo, you enter Benin. I went to a country called Benin. When I entered Benin with the person I was with, we drove for more than four hours going to a village in Benin. I don't even know that village. But I understand that that village is in a place called Kotonou. I went to that place called Kotonou with the guy that I was with. When we entered Kotonou, there is a place that we went to where you only find there is a place that we went to where you only find... The reason why I speak like this, it is because I know what I know. And I stand for what I know. And I know that there is nothing they can do to me. The only thing that they can try to do is to come and attack me physically. But spiritually, they can do nothing to me. Because I know what I know. And I know what I know. Just keep that in mind. I know what I know. That is why they will try to do everything. That is why they try to do everything. That is why they try to do everything to stop me. That's why I stopped wearing my wedding ring. Because they said they know my village. One lecturer in BS will say it's the same place we go for charm. It's the same place. Like he, he doesn't deny that he goes. He goes there. But it's... <laughs> oh God. If you are concerned about it, you are a baby.
Now, how did you feel listening to that? I don't know what you think about what J. Israel had to say, but to a great extent, I think I have made this point before. This is someone that used to flow with the likes of Makandiwa, Bushiri, Ubert Angel, name them, okay? When I see people like maybe J. Israel, uh, Prof. X, and a couple of them I've seen online, which maybe I might be looking at them, don't put me in the box because I've never been in such a system in my life. If you know, if you have been watching me over time, I don't have to introduce myself to you, my background on a couple of things. So you might have to watch more videos to know that. So the fact is that um, when I look at these things and see them on social media, talk about them, it makes me understand a couple of things going on in the body of Christ, if I'm to call it that way, or in the church with regards to what people themselves or those people that are being um, with regards to people that are followed by many of us right here. But the fact is that um, if I see some things, of course, as someone that reports and blogs about this, I'm going to share them and then give my opinions here and there. But with re regards to what he talked about, you know, his own personal experience and the rings, I'm going to be sharing with you something else in the course of the week that might shock you as well. I'm telling you. And you haven't even heard things because... I think it gets to a point whereby we as Christians need to start asking questions. We don't ask questions. We take everything hook, line, and sinker. We can never ever disagree with those we call our pastors because we believe they are infallible. And we now look at this also in even in the even in Catholicism, the Pope is believed as being infallible. You see, but is there anyone that is actually infallible that is without mistakes or something? You understand? So. It surprises me and beats my imagination that when I start asking questions or talking about some kind of conversations or maybe questioning some things that preachers preach, of course, I'll see their, their followers come in the comments and keep engaging. In the end, I have to tell you the gospel truth here, or would I say the social media truth. The more you engage in the comments and argue and all of that thing, the more that video you don't want people to see or you don't like gets seen by people. You understand but i encourage conversations in the comments because that's why i get to interact with you i don't interact with people that come and then want to come you know maybe insult or call names or lay curses as their pastor has taught them to lay curses which never work of course but if we don't start having this conversation and questioning these things we have seen pastors here today question the bible question the authors of the bible and if you now question the same pastors of the, as the things they say, the followers come and start ranting in the comments. But anyway, I don't blame you at all. You are entitled to your opinion. My opinion are in videos, not in comments. But you could tell me what you think about what J. Israel has said. Is he saying the truth? Is he just overthinking it or something? I'll be reading your comments in the comment section. See you. Yeah.